Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the qualifying child as well as the qualifying relative. Now let's take a look at this tax form to understand the big picture. Why do we need to learn about this? In the prior session, we looked at the filing status of the individual, such as single, married filing jointly, married filing separately, head of a household, qualifying, surviving, qualifying, surviving spouse. And we, we stated that you have to have some sort of a dependent if you're a head of a household, and that dependent could be a child, or that dependent could be a quali qualifying relative. So we talked about qualifying child, QC, and qualifying relative. So notice here, the dependent, after we list the dependent, after we list their name, their social security relationship to you, we need to see if this dependent qualify you for the child tax credit, or does it qualify you credit for other dependents, which is qualifying relative. Now, obviously you want the qualifying child because it's higher, It's there's more money in there. So what we need to learn about here is when we come up to this dependent, whether it's a qualifying child or a qualifying relative, how do we how do we make this how do we make this determination? Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So dependent, there are two types of dependent, a qualifying child or a qualifying relative. And unique tests apply to each type of dependent. So, that, so why it's important? So you might be saying, why do we have to know what's a qualifying child? Well, for one thing, for the purpose of the head of a household, we need to know if that individual is for the head of a household, whether it's a qualifying child or qualifying relative. Also, we're going to learn later on about earned income tax credit, child and dependent tax credit, credit for child and dependent care expenses. So we need, we're, we're going to be using those terms later on when we talk about different credits. So that's why we need to know what is a qualifying child, what's a qualifying relative. Starting with a qualifying child, we have five tasks to go through. We have the relationship test, residence test, age test, support test, and joint return. So as you know anything about Farhat, once I have a list, I'm going to go through each of these lists in details to explain the concept. Starting with the relationship test. Now, the first thing that comes to mind, if it's a relationship test about a qualifying child, so the child must be your son or daughter. That's the first thing you would think about, of course. But they could also be your stepson or stepdaughter, your brother or sister. They can qualify as a qualifying child as long as they meet other requirements, which we will see later. Stepbrother or stepsister, half a brother or a half sister, a descendant of such individual, grandchildren, nephews, and nieces. So notice, if you notice anything, it's you, it's the taxpayer, and notice it's going to be people young, not younger, below you. Like, you cannot have your parents or your grandparents. Do you see this? It's all descendant of such individual. Now, a child who has been adopted or whose adoption is pending qualifies as well. A foster child may also qualify. Now, let's talk about the residency test, residence test. A qualifying child must live with the taxpayer for more than half of the year. Remember, to qualify you as a head of a household, remember the age when I spoke about head of a household, they have to live with you. Temporary absences is okay. For example, they could be in school, in college, or they could be have an illness in a medical institution, that's fine. Those, they, they get be waived. They must be a U.S. citizen or a resident of the U.S., Canada, or Mexico. Now, those same rules, they're going to be applies to the qualifying relative as well. Same test applies to qualifying relative because we're going to be discussing qualifying relative later. Age test. Remember, we talked about brother, sister, so on and so forth. There is an age test. So the child must be under the age of 19. Well, or 
under the age of 24 in case they were full-time student during any any five part five month of the year why five months because in the u.s when you go to school each semester is four to five months so even if they were one semester in college so let's assume they were from january till till may january till may that's five months so once they attend one full-time semester it doesn't matter now the age goes to up to 24. now they must be younger than you so the younger than you younger than you the taxpayer if you're claiming someone as a qualifying child that individual must be younger than you so if we're talking about your brother and sister that's what i said they have to be younger than you however individuals who are disabled are not subject to the age test so if the individual that you are qualifying as a qualifying child and that individual is considered disabled you forget about the age test now let's discuss the support test to be an eligible child qualifying child the individual must not be self-supporting and the individual means the qualifying child in other words let's think about macaulay coken who is a famous actor he was a child you know he's known for home alone the point is they can be millionaires the child can be a millionaire as long as they don't provide more than half of their own support in other words they did not spend their money on their own support they could be making this money and don't spend it they could put it in a bank account in a trust account so there is no gross income test we have to understand this this is important because we're going to have another support test when it comes to the qualifying relative and we have to know the difference so a child cannot provide more than half of his or her own support so they can be millionaire nevertheless they're not spending that money someone else is spending the money on them their parents then that's fine that's fine now joint return test the dependent cannot file a joint return with a spouse unless the only reason they're doing so is to get a refund now you might be saying how can a child get married and have a uh, spouse well think about it remember we said they have to be less than 19 or less than 24 if they're college students so it's possible that for example my son get married to someone in college and uh, they work part-time and as a result they have some money some taxes withheld from their paycheck and they wanted to file a return just to get a refund just to get the tax withheld they, they have no tax liability both of them they have no tax liability so what they would do they will file a joint return and that's that otherwise there should not be filing a joint return and this same test also apply to a qualifying relative so those are the tests for a qualifying child now let's take a look at the qualifying relative well qualifying relative can be dependent if the following tests are met relationship test and notice here or that's important member of a household test and we have to explain this a little bit more on the next slide gross income test which is totally different you're gonna see this support test a little bit different little you have to be you have to be very careful we have the residency test which is the same as qualifying child and the joint return test the same as qualifying child so i'm going to go over those very briefly let's start with the relationship test or a household member test well the relationship test for a qualifying relative is more expensive you can have more people than a qualifying child and this includes the following relatives now you can go you remember i told you it has to be people below you with a qualifying child now it can be your parents your grandparents you can consider them as qualifying relative qualifying relative to be qualified as a dependent uncles and aunts also certain in-laws son son-in-law daughter-in-law father-in-law mother-in-law brother-in-law sister-in-law why not the relationship test also include unrelated parties and here we're talking about boyfriend girlfriend cousins who live with the taxpayer the entire year so here you have a different test member of a household you remember when i talked about head of a household i said boyfriend girlfriend um your lazy friend uh, your uh, uh, your irresponsible friend they cannot qualify you head of a household but they can be considered your dependent for the dependency purposes but those cannot qualify you for a head of a household just want to make sure this is clear okay the relationship test the gross income test this is different if the individual if that individual that you're trying to claim as a dependent make above a certain amount what is that amount that amount changes every year but 
there's there's a logic behind that amount it's called an exemption and this used to exist before 2018 each individual will have a personal exemption now the personal exemption for 2022 is 4400 this is given by the irs and it changes from year to year subject to inflation so if that individual earns more than 4400 that's it it means they are making enough money you can they cannot be your qualifying relative okay remember this does not apply to a qualifying child a child they could be they could be making millions and millions of dollars as long as they're not spending it to support themselves then that's fine there is no gross income test for the qualifying child there's a gross income test for a qualifying relative now the income does not include does not it's not counted so you don't count their income if their income is tax exempt income so if it's a mini bond interest income if it's social security income any sort of tax exempt income will not be counted so you will not count this income let's assume someone invested money and they're only earning mini bond interest then no worries we don't have to count this income so they could still qualify even though they might be making ten thousand dollar in interest income from money bond that's fine because it doesn't count against that four thousand four hundred a joint return test we talked about this the same thing as qualifying child if they are filing a joint return only to get a refund citizenship or residency test the same thing as qualifying child same 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 concept support test now we have to be careful remember at the support test i took my time to told you to be aware of it now the taxpayer notice here the taxpayer must provide more than 50 percent of the qualifying relative support under the child the taxpayer did not have to do that under the qualifying child the child did not provide more than 50 percent of their support under the qualifying relative the taxpayer must it's you who is spending money on your lazy boyfriend or girlfriend it's you are spending the money you have to do that for the support test and you only count the actual money spent okay now scholarship don't count for example don't count for them if you're counting their support now two exceptions apply to the support test sometimes there's a multiple support agreement or children of divorced parents we have to be aware of those rules but remember under the support test the taxpayer themselves they have to be spending money on them spending money on them the child as long as the child did not provide more than 50 percent of their own support now multiple support agreement what does that mean it means when you have several individuals together contribute the 50 percent plus well what happened they agree together and they would allow one member of the group provided to, to to be considered that they provided more than 50 percent remember you have to provide more than 50 percent so let's assume we have three individuals one's providing 45 the other individual this is the first individual the second individual is providing 48 so that's one that's two what's the third so we're missing seven i guess two seven seven that will make it 100 percent right 80 this is 100 percent now notice not one person is contributing more than 50 percent but they can agree they can agree this is a b c they can agree but however the the party that we agree to cannot be providing less than 10 percent so c cannot be so it's either a or b so a b and c they can say okay a for year one you will be the person claiming this dependent b in year two or whatever they agreed on each el eligible party must meet all other dependency requirements of course just the dependency requirement would still apply a good example will be allowing children of elderly parent to claim exemption for parent where none where none individually meet the 50 percent support i remember my grandma i had like five individuals and as uncles and aunts and what they do and none of them you know meet the 50 percent test they'll just agree amongst each other who's going to claim her uh, from year to year children of divorced parent again the general rule here is the parent having custody the custodial parent of the child which means they spend more than 50 percent of the time with them usually will claim it this is called the time test the support test here is ignored it doesn't matter whether that uh, the, there's a support test or not as well as the divorce degree if the custody is 50 50 the parent with the higher adjusted gross income now the general rule does not apply if there's a multiple support agreement is in effect they're agreeing with each other or the custodial parent basically they they qualify to have it but said you know what i would let you uh, i would let you have the uh, the dependent child that's fine now if both if both parties are not the parent the person with the higher adjusted gross income what should you do now you should go to farhat lectures and look at mcqs true false 
uh, questions that's going to help you understand this concept. Qualifying child, it's going to appear again and again and again later on when we talk about credit. It's something that you want to be familiar with. What's the difference between qualifying child, qualifying relative? Definitely a testable, easy topic on the CPA exam. Easy topic for the enrolled agent is if you are an accounting student taking this tax course, you should know it. Good luck, study hard, good luck, and stay safe.